Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day enjoying Soul Fest so far. My name is Johanna King and I will be leading today's workshop. I would like to first begin by thanking All House Dance Collective for having me here and putting up this festival and promoting all of the amazing artists, musicians, and dancers that you're going to see over the next two days. We ask that you all donate what you can to our GoFundMe um, and that is referenced everywhere around this um, video, this festival, any promotional post you've seen. Um, and it really supports All House's mission to create free and accessible content. So please share this festival on your social medias um, and please promote our artist fund as well. And stick around today and tomorrow to see the rest of the art that we've created for you and to see all the other creatives um, and their work that they have been really excited to show to you. My workshop specifically is about finding movement in space. And that is in whatever space you may be in, whether you're in an apartment, whether you're at home or in a studio or outside, or I've actually been doing a lot of my dancing lately. So I'm going to show you three specific ways to find movement in whatever space you're in. And since we're specifically working with sites today, um, I think that we should begin with a very brief land acknowledgement. Um, I am currently located in California and I am an uninvited presence on Ramatushaloni land. I've had the privilege of learning a little about the Ramatush Ohlone people and the ways that they use this land for housing and farming and different ways of migrating through the terrain. If you don't know your local um, indigenous tribes that were the original settlers of the land that you're in right now, I really encourage you to go look it up. Uh, you can find all of that information on native dash land dot ca i just think that starting with a land acknowledgement really helps you appreciate the land that you're on and the history that it's brought before you and that will experience without us in the future um, we spend a lot of time living in our spaces even in our own homes especially during the pandemic and that really shapes how we react as well so i think it's really important to acknowledge where we have been and where we are going and who has been here before us as well. So <laughs> with all of that talking, I'm sure you want to move. And before we start really moving, we're going to start with a warm up um, or an attunement that I found really, really helpful to me. It really um, limbers me up a lot and it gets everything kind of moving, especially when I've been sitting at my computer all day, which is exactly what I've been doing today. So we're gonna start by taking a couple of deep breaths and you can follow with me. I'm gonna have some music going and hopefully it's relaxing, <laughs> but you can close your eyes or take a soft gaze to the floor, looking through your computer screen, up to a corner, just wherever you need to be. And we're gonna take an inhale together and exhale, and you can follow my hands or not, but just to narrate, I'm gathering my breath all the way up and holding and exhaling. And you can make this as loud as you want. And you inhale and exhale. Again, inhale, <sighs> exhale. And as we're breathing, just noticing where we're holding any tension, whether it's in our back bodies, in our jaw, in our neck, anywhere where there's strain, you don't have to correct it. Just notice it. And we'll do two more breaths together. We're gonna go in and out. And one more big one in and out. Awesome. 
opening our eyes to a soft gaze before we recenter ourselves. We're gonna do a little bit of tactile touch. So right now I'm just tapping my arms. You can go into your le <laughs> legs, your neck, also your legs and your feet. Don't forget your feet, we're on them all day. Um, you're gonna mute the ads. <laughs> And we're gonna tap, you can rub, you can massage, and just all over the face, all over the arms, whatever you need, whichever areas of your body that you need to wake up. I've been typing a lot today, so I feel my hands and my wrists might need a little bit more massage than usual. I know my lower back gets a lot of it, so pay attention to the areas of your body that maybe need a little padding, a little extra care. It can be a rub, it can be a squeeze. Squeezing is great. And also paying attention to what parts of your body are touching the other parts. Um, I have my legs kind of tapping the bottoms of my other legs and my feet. Um, so really get all of your surfaces and next, we're gonna try to get into a really small ball once you feel satisfied with your touching. And we're gonna get into a really small ball. And we're gonna extend out, reaching as far as we can, and back in. And out into a new direction, and back in. And out, you can point or flex your toes and in, but really feel your body reaching the corners of what you can reach. And we're gonna fill that orb and we're gonna keep moving as we come back in and come out into a new direction. Bring it around and back in. One more, out, really reach and back in perfect okay so head to tail means the tip top of your head and then the bottom of your tailbone right here and we're gonna leave with the head and follow their tail head tail and really try to think of your um spine and how that entire this is my head and this is my tail how that really moves as a unit in your body you can do a roll, you can go down. Just let your head lead you. Okay, this is supposed to be a little bit of a brain massage. Um, so our next section, just moving along here, is gonna be our upper and our lower bodies. So we're gonna find a nice open position at my feet are about hips width apart. And we're just gonna move our upper body and try not to move your knees or anything below. So we're gonna be keeping our hips in place and moving our torso, our arms, your neck, your head. It's okay to have rotation in the hips, but try not to really overwork your, the bottom half of your body. And when you're comfortable, with these movements, whatever that may be, you can transition into just your legs. And we're gonna keep our upper body still. And you can kick, you can kick backwards, you can walk and keep your upper body straight. Right, that's something that we can't do with our top body. And I'm shifting my top body as I move my bottom, but I'm not tilting, right? And once we're comfortable with that, just like the head and tail, we can alternate where we only move our top and we go to our bottom. <laughs> and that can have some pretty interesting flavors of movement. Right? So <laughs> I could do that all day, but we have to move on. 
and we're gonna go to our body half. So imagine an imaginary line on the top of your head between you, and it's kind of like a puppet, like a marionette. Um, and we're just gonna move half of our body at a time. So this is um, homolateral movement. And what's really refreshing about it is we don't really move like this all the time. We're so used to walking, you know, cross laterally that getting to move or only allowing ourselves to move, giving us constraints on our movement can be really cool and different and helpful to kind of find new movement patterns. So with that, we're gonna go into cross lateral movement. That's what we're really used to all the time. It's this walking movement that we have, or we can go to our corners, behind us, in front of us, switch it up. So really allowing that crossing to happen and also thinking about crossing your midsection with your body as you're moving. So crossing in front and again behind and allowing that to happen as well. And our last little motion I think is the most fun. Um, we're gonna spin. I'm gonna put a warning that if you get dizzy very easily or nauseous or can't really handle circular motions, um, maybe sit this one out or go very slowly and listen to your body on this one. Really please take care of yourselves. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin and we're gonna let ourselves get dizzy and we're gonna stop and regain our balance. It's a little difficult because I have a big light in front of me, <laughs> so I get more disoriented. But we're gonna spin the other way and stop. And as soon as you get your bearings straight, then go back. Now, if you're a dancer out there, you might hear about spotting and might have an awareness of what spotting is, and we're not doing that. We're really trying to allow ourselves to get really, really dizzy. So let's spin one more time and stop. Don't fall down. And spin and stop. Perfect. Awesome. I hope that was a lot of fun for you. Let's um, regroup for a couple minutes and then uh, uh, we can take a little bit of a break. <laughs> So let's just take a couple breaths together. I'm gonna to put one hand on my chest, one hand where I just feel extra tension is needed. And we're gonna to breathe together. We're gonna to breathe in. And out. And in. <sighs> Feel that blood circulating. Feel your heartbeat kind of slow down a little bit. It's gonna stay quick. And take one breath together again. Exhale. Okay. I'm gonna hit pause on this music. Now that we've warmed up a little bit, check your body. Check and see that everything's kind of warmed up. See what needs extra attention or care. You can always go back to any of these exercises at any time and just reintroduce a little bit of touch or motion or mobility to what you need for your body for right now. Um, I did forget to mention at the beginning of this exercise that all of these can be done sitting down and all of them can be done laying down. Um, really, it's finding touch, finding ways to get small and big, your head to tail connection, moving your upper body and your lower body separately. You can do that very easily in a chair. 
um, your left and right sides of your body, cross lateral motion. I know I'm going through this very, very quickly. And then um, spinning, which you can do laying down or just turning your head, allowing a little bit of this incoherency to happen. Um, so these can be done almost always, <laughs> which is what I really love about it is that it's such an adaptive exercise. And because of the different ways you move, it can be as vigorous as you make it. It can raise your heart rate as much as you want. So we're going to take a break now. Please um, get some water, get a snack, anything you need right now to take care of yourself. I'm going to go um, into a little bit more about what this workshop is going to look like and you can just sit and listen and take care of yourself. <laughs> so while you're on your break, I'm going to ask that you gather three to five items in your home. Doesn't matter what it is, it really doesn't. And um, something to write with and something to write on. So a pen and paper, or cardboard box and a marker. My um, old dance teacher would say lipstick and your hand. I don't know why she said that, <laughs> but um, anything that you can write with. Um, and three to five items, it can be really anything, any size. I will not, there's no preference. This can work with pretty much anything. Um, I'm going to pick a couple items myself. I do encourage you if you have the ability to go outside and go on a walk and pick up a couple of things that interest you. That is also a really fun way to get site specific. Um, so I'm going to go and the next time you see me, I will have three items. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. I have my objects. Um, and I'm going to put mine to the side right now. We don't need them immediately right now. Um, so I was going to talk a little bit first about space and architecture. This is about um, finding movement in your space. And I think that it's also important to acknowledge what we have around us physically. Um, when you're outside, this can be, look a lot different depending on what's around you. Um, and versus when you're inside. What I like about being inside is that you're kind of guaranteed your um, walls. So you have, I have a corner here, a corner in that corner, and then where my wall hits my ceiling and those kind of crevices. So I have guaranteed shapes in my space, which is indoors. You also see that I have the window, which is another square, and it's made up of two rectangles, but with my blinds, they make kind of four squares. So looking for little shapes like that, very simple shaped objects, um, is a really good way of paying attention to your environment. Um, because as dancers, I think a very common thing we do first is when we're choreographing, we try to find and make lines, we try to make shapes, we try to, you know, um, focus really on that artistry <laughs> and the aesthetics of dance. And it gets really hard to um, transition into these different shapes. So this is a movement study that I have been in love with for a very long time and that I use all the time when I choreograph for myself, um, when I'm doing any sort of improvisational work, when I'm working in a classroom, if I ever get stuck, I really go back to these three principles all the time. So I want to begin a little bit and back up and start with a noticing activity. And we're going to notice things within our own spaces. So what you notice will be different from what I notice. And I'm gonna ask you to take a look around your room and find anything red. And you don't have to search for anything. You don't have to go anywhere. Just 
look past your screen or turn your head and look around and just notice, you don't have to count, how many things around you are red. And I think you'll find that the longer you look, the more things kind of come up in surprising places. So we're just looking for red. Anything that's red, any object that's red or part of an object that could be red around us. And just notice what it is and uh, maybe the function that it holds. And my next direction will be for you to find anything green. And just look around. And again, we're just noticing. We don't have to count. We don't have to really keep too much track of. Just look for anything in your space that's green, any shade of green, or you can look for specific shades of green and think about which shade of green you like more. And we're gonna look for one more color. And that color is purple. And we're just gonna look for something purple. I did this activity um, earlier today. I actually worked on this workshop earlier today, but my audio, um, it was really windy. So the audio was not great. And I was outside and I found quite a number of things that were purple for being outside at a park. And I'm in my house now and I don't own a lot of purple, but I am seeing quite a bit of purple. So I hope that you're noticing, or maybe you don't notice any purple at all and that's absolutely okay. Let's just notice. And the last thing I want us to notice is something that's paper. And just look around and look for all the paper products in your home, in your environment, outside. For me personally, I have a huge stack of paper that I need to get to, and I'm not gonna think about it. I'm just gonna notice. <laughs> um, just noticing the function in the form of paper. I found some Kleenex, that's fun. Um, so I really hope that you're finding these objects and just noticing and now when we look at our room and we're looking for shapes, can we notice any distinct shapes in our room, in our environment, wherever you're at, and try to look for those shapes and just notice. So for me, I'm gonna notice what you can see on my screen. So I'm just gonna be looking at my camera, at what's behind me um, and noticing the shapes that are kind of just behind me in this room and you can look at the shapes in the room that I'm in and work with me, or you can look at the shapes in your own space. But just notice, just look, just see what's there architecturally. Maybe even the floor might have different shapes. I have um, a hard wood floor kind of vinyl and it's little rectangular slats of wood, but then the wood has little the circles of the grain. And I think those are some interesting shapes. Um, you might have a blemish on your kitchen floor. You might have anything on your wall. These are all shapes around us. A line is a shape as well. And we're just noticing the different shapes. So with that noticing, we're gonna pick a shape or an object or a region. I know those are all very different, but we're going to pick an area and we are going to map it with our bodies. What does mapping mean? Mapping can be anything from drawing with your finger the shape to creating the shape with your body. So for the um, window behind me if I'm thinking of the two outsides and the um, intersection here or the two outsides and the one center. You can be thinking of function. My window slides up and down so I could think of the two sides and how it slides up and down. Um, 
you think of the blinds and the texture of the blinds, I kind of think of like when you go across them and you go da 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 da. You can go da 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 um, and create movement like that. It's really all up to you and it's what that object inspires you. So because my window is the largest thing on the screen right now, I think I'm going to be personally working with that in creating movement. And I'm going to create movement with you and you can follow along with me. Or you can pick your own object in your own home and create your own movement based on that. But I'm just going to walk through and model what movement could look like for this window. So everything I do towards the camera will be regarding the window behind me. So I'm going to put on some music and we can do this together. Okay, Whew. so now that we've improved a little bit with just our one piece of architecture, we're going to create um, just a small movement that encapsulates everything that we kind of improv. So with me, I think I did just a lot of up and down movements, a lot of my arms, um, since that's what can be seen on the screen. So I think for me, if I had a movement, it would be the windows closing, the blinds going down, and then opening. Um, and that would be just the one movement. Um, and that could be the beginning of a new choreography. Um, it really could be absolutely anything that you make it. We're going to let this piece go, um, this little architectural space, because it was really just an example of what it means to find movement in architecture. And it is always absolutely something you can go back to if you ever get stuck with anything we do today or anything we do with dance is just finding a piece of architecture. For example, the couch with some pillows, <laughs> right? and finding ways to mimic that movement, mimic the shape, or even the comfort that you feel. Um, and that's really what I love about architectural movement and architectural gesturing, is that it is very ab abstract, but when you're watching something or looking at something, it is very specific to you as a creator, as you as a dancer, as you as a mover, as an artist, all of it. So <laughs> that was a lot of talking. We're going to go into our objects. <laughs> and I found my outside objects and I found a couple inside objects. So I don't quite know exactly what I'm going to use. But I think this was an interesting piece that I found from outside on my walk. It's a leaf. It looks like this very leaf-like but pick your one object and we're going to take a long time to just look and notice what we see 
I'm going to get really close to the camera and kind of put my fingers up. And this is a great time, by the way, to have your pen and paper out because we will be writing some things down. Um, so if you don't have that near you, please go get it. <laughs> and I'm going to start describing this leaf to you. And you can have your object in front of you as well. And just do some noticing like I am. So I'm looking here at this leaf. Um, it's pretty long. It has some curves. It has a bit of an S curve and a little bit of a twist going in it. It's a little helical and I think that's pretty cool. I didn't really notice that when I picked it up. It looks pretty chewed up all together. The leaf is red and it has a reddish, reddish tint. If I hold it against the light, I can barely see through it, but it has these tiny like flecks of um, translucency. And I can see the veins of this leaf. It's a very rigid leaf. I feel like if I bent it, I could break it pretty easily. It would snap, definitely. Um, and the coloring is this pinkish red. It's a lot redder when I hold it against the light. You can't really see it. Just trust me. <laughs> and, um, but like far away, it does look pretty pink. And up close against the light, the stem and like this main mid veins. On the orange side, it's a little dark. And then these outsides look a little burned. Um, and I'm wondering if that's from an animal of some sort, like a bug, or if it's just from being outside and being stepped on and drying out. But it's like brown and yellowish. There's a little patch of gray here. And it has an interesting texture. It's very rough, very rigid. But you see lots of tiny little bumps. And the bumps are almost, they have a little black. And that's pretty cool. There's a little black specks in here. Um, what else am I noticing? Ooh, do you hear that? ASMR, if you hate it, I'm so sorry. It's very rough sounding as well. So these are the things that I have noticed. I looked at color, I looked at texture, I looked at sound, um, I looked at translucency. I, um, it's a leaf, so I, it can only be made out of so many things. I kind of looked at material. And these are all examples of physical attributes that we can examine when looking at something. And when we're looking at something, we want to just really see it for what it is. Right? When we're finding a physical attribute. So why don't you, at home, take your first object and write down a couple of physical attributes about your object. Um, for me, I think I'd definitely talk about this curvature in the spine. I'd talk about how the spine's very thick and how overall it's rigid and it has a very abnormal wonky shape on the outside. So those are what I'd write. Oh, and I'd write that it's pink, um, mostly. <laughs> um, so these are the things that I would be writing down as notes for myself. So once you have a couple of things written down, and I'm just gonna keep my object in hand so I can see it. Um, you can put your object down and look at your list again and kind of pick two attributes you want to focus on. So for me, I definitely want to talk about this curve. I definitely want to encapsulate this curve. And the other thing is color. I want to talk about this color. So, for me, I have shape and color, and for you, it can be anything you want um, from what you wrote down. 
So if I were writing all of this down, I would circle what I said about shape, it's curvy. And I would um, circle everything I said about color. It's pink, it's uh, got some brown spotting, some gray-ish areas, all of that. And I would circle that. Going into movement again, <laughs> we're gonna focus on one of those attributes. So mine, uh, my first one is the shape. So it's that curvy little shape. And we're just going to explore what that shape means. So I'm gonna put music on again and be right back. So thinking about shape, I'm thinking about the curve and the curve down. I'm looking at the object too as I'm going. Kind of spiral. Maybe all of it. And back down. Maybe it goes up. I think I found a movement that fits my body pretty well and that I enjoy doing. Um, unfortunately, you can't see all of it in the screen and I'm wearing black, but it's kind of just this curve up and I'm turning my leg in as I'm curving up and then you kind of undo it. So you go up and you undo. So that's gonna be, if you're following along with me, our first movement, if you want to practice this on your own with your own object, your first movement will be whatever feels good in your body and that you feel encapsulates what your aspect means to you. We're gonna move on to the second aspect. For me, that was color and it's pinkish hue. And it's really hard to embody something as abstract as color. But we're going to do it today, first of all, and I believe in you. But a really easy way of doing it is thinking about what emotions come up with that color. And it doesn't have to be tied to your object. For me, um, growing up, I hated the color pink, despised it in almost every way. Um, and now as an adult, I enjoy it. Um, but this doesn't look that pink to me. This kind of reminds me of like pottery clay, you know. Um, it's a very pleasant shade, actually. And this like weathered yellow coloring, grayish coloring, to me, I think looks more like raw clay or a finished pottery piece. And I think that fits in more with like the natural state of this leaf. When I think of pink, I also think of like, or at least this color, sandy, you know, a sandy little texture, which goes really well with the clay. I think I'm just on this clay chain right now. Please bear with me. Um, so let's think about pink and this clay texture that we've come up with ourselves and this narrative of a weathered pot that I have in my head for some reason. I think of moving the clay, moving the sand, gathering, molding. I really like I'm really going back to this idea of like working with my hands and having tension in my hands. So I think I'm gonna use that. And I think it's just gonna be a, 
some sort of coming in and turning. Yeah, you can just do a step and turn it up. I think that is fantastic. <laughs> okay, so we have two movements now. We have our spiral up, spiral back, and then you step and you mold. And those are our two movements that we have for our first object, mine being the leaf, yours, or whatever it is you're following with, whether it's with me or something in your own home. So our next object, we're gonna pick our second object. I'm gonna grab this. It's just a pillow, it's from my couch. Um, <laughs> I have multiple of these. And it is going to be a little bit more difficult of a quandary, but this is our final technique of finding movement in our space. And this is about um, emotional connection. How do we find emotional connection? Well, <laughs> we are going to observe this object and we're gonna think about um, greater aspects of beyond kind of the physicality of the object. So as an example, and I'm gonna walk us through this two times just to kind of clarify anything. Um, I'm gonna look at just this object and it has these um, grooves, these folds. And I'm noticing as I'm putting my hands in the folds that they're a lot cooler in temperature. And I kind of think about like, oh, these are concealed parts of the pillow and that's why they're cooler, you know, to the touch. And I kind of think about aspects of our personalities I guess is where this is taking me. It gets very introspective very quickly. Um, and how our, how our concealed parts, our little folds in our personalities um, can be a lot darker because we don't nurture them as much and like show them to others. Um, so it's refreshing when those aspects kind of emerge in ourselves when we allow ourselves to kind of unfold a little bit and allow touch to get in and person personal touch or emotional touch however you want to see it um and how for me personally if i see a friend of mine opening up or a new side of them it is refreshing to see that they're just as complicated and you know they have these wonderful qualities that not everyone gets to see and i think that's really lovely these hidden parts of ourselves or even finding that in ourselves. <laughs> um, so if i were going to write something down about this i would i would probably just write um cool and refreshing folds of personality or something like that just a short phrase to kind of go over my thought process. So that's one direction you could go. Another direction um, for me, I would think about this is a pillow. Hello, pillow. And I use it for comfort. It's a decorative pillow. So it also is just there to look good. But it's nice to squeeze nice to hold. It's very soft and squishy. And for me personally, I mean, I think for a lot of people, there's something comfortable and comforting about softness and being able to hold and being able to squeeze onto things. And I think of watching Netflix and Hulu at home by myself and just being comfortable and kind of taking care of myself when I'm on a pillow of any sort or when you're sleeping at home in your bed you also have a pillow and that's a form of care to yourself and comfort. And I kind of think of in what ways 
am I always taking care of myself? You know, I surround myself with pillows. That other couch actually usually has pillows as well. Um, and kind of noticing that that's a form of self-care and surrounding myself with these objects is a form of self-care. Um, so if, if I were to write something down, I'd write down, how did I care for myself today? Just as a question, how did I care for myself today? Because I think that's something that I don't think about enough. <laughs> And I don't think about the little ways that I choose to take care of myself, whether it be going to bed early, chilling on the couch, buying a bunch of pillows, all of that good stuff. Um, so now we have our two kind of introspective questions or lines of thought, and you can do that with your own object. Um, you could even think about color and what color means to you in a deeper level. Um, but for now, I think I'm gonna think, uh, stick with how did I take care of myself today? And I'm gonna turn up the music and this is gonna be a longer movement practice. I may um, cut some of the uh, exploration down just for the sake of time, but please take all the time you need to explore your big question and this is your emotional connection based on the object that you have. And if you ever lose track of where you're going during this improvisational time, you can go back to the physical shape of your object, the texture, the color, anything about your object, or you can look at your paper again and think about the question or the statement or the comment that you kind of came up with and refresh your mind and reset your body um, because these are all tools to get us started in moving but if we stray away from them that is just as good it's in fact great and wonderful but if we get lost along that journey we always have these fundamental things to bring us back and to pull us in to um, centering and grounding and focusing on one thing at a time before again expanding into our dynamic inf um, information flux of movement that kind of comes after. So I'm going to turn up my music. I'm going to think about how I took care of myself today. And we are just going to dance for a little bit. <laughs>
kind of gone through a little bit of improvisational work, trying to see if there were any images that were recurring to you, any feelings that were recurring to you, or any like physical motifs that were recurring to you. I think for me, I did a lot of kind of contracting movements with like little tiny body rolls. Um, I can't do any jumping or turning or going on the floor in my apartment. Um, I have people who would blow me. So um, a lot of my movement was upper body based today and kind of exploring that and being limited to that is a little different. I prefer to be outside and not in my apartment when I'm moving. Um, but I felt a lot of tenderness when I would rub my arms or focus on my hands together. Um, and to me, that felt very caring of myself. I thought of all the things I ate and kind of drank today um, that was nourishing to me. So I think if I had to pick a movement, it would be this grabbing to the body roll and just letting it all sink down, <laughs> right? So again, it's this grabbing to your mouth and the body roll, <laughs> just a small one, and just letting it sink down and really just feeling your arms to your belly. So that would be my movement. And that means we now have three movements, four if we include our architecture. Um, so we have our twisting phase. We have our colored phase of the pink. And then we also have this eating and warmth phase. If you're following along with me, if you're working on your own thing, then you have your own set of movements and you should have three of them. So it's going to be your two physical attribute gestures and your one emotional connection. So the moment we've all been waiting for, our final and third object that I haven't really picked yet for me um, I have this, I don't know what it is. If someone could tell me what it is later, I would really appreciate it. But I found it on a walk. I think it might have something um, living in it, but I hope not. It reminds me of like a little rattle. Um, I found this on a walk I took with my family and that was super fun. Um, so what we're going to do with our third and final object, it's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to actually use all three of these techniques on our last object. So we're going to do architectural awareness. We're going to um, pick two physical attributes and one emotional connection. And I will walk through all of those things with you. But basically, we'll look at the architecture, so the basic shape. Um, I think of kind of like a tree, up and then kind of out, but it goes to the side, so out, so up, and then out. Could be a movement for this, or you can think of just the little stars and just star, 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 star. <laughs> um, it could be anything about just the pure shape of this object. I think for simplicity's sake, we can pick that as our gesture for architecture. So for your third object, just very quickly, look at its shape, look at maybe some very straight out attributes and create your own shape. Um, and as you're doing that, we're gonna talk about physical attributes. So this is pretty heavy to me. It's thick, it's wood, it's rigid if I bent it, it would definitely break, but it's very hard. It's very prickly, it's very spiny. I am going through this very quickly. <laughs> you do not have to be this quick. Um, it's really good to be thorough when doing this. Um, it has a smell. I don't want to put it to my nose in case there's a bug, 
but there is a little bit of a piney smell. Um, it's brown, but it has like areas of light brown and areas of dark brown. Um, it has tiny little spider webs in it, so I don't want to look too close at it. Oof, my eyes. Um, but you can look at it and get some inspiration. They have these divots inside of these uh, bigger holes. I think they ho held seeds. They might be seed pods of some sort. And um, it's very rough, very coarse. And this is very prickly. I wonder what would happen if I smashed it. Probably explode. <laughs> but these are some physical attributes. And we can make shape based on that. So um, I like the uh, prickliness. I love texture. Um, so for the prickles, I think of like a <laughs> like a praying mantis. It's kind of silly, but I really think something like that could work. I'm gonna pick that as my movement and we can do that movement together. Let's put our hands to the side and just kind of, yeah, travel, like move your shoulders as we do like a little kick. And then I have this leg bent. I wish I wasn't wearing black pants for this. So sorry. <laughs> um, perfect. So now we have one physical attribute. For my second one, I want to pick the sturdiness. It does look like a weapon. <laughs> I will say that. So with the sturdiness, I think of like being unmovable. Um, so kind of low to the ground, trunk like, and just, I think this works. We're gonna do that just for the sake of um, time and fun, because I do wanna spend a little bit more time on the emotional connection because I know that that is a piece that is a little bit more difficult um, to kind of wrap our heads around and to really think about. For me, if I do an emotional connection to something, I kind of have to think about it. It's not really an on-the-spot improv um, move I can pull out all the time. But it works really, really well if you're planning choreographic works. It does work for improv. I just find for me, myself, that I always need a little bit more practice. And it helps so much to write down my ideas as I'm going. So, I found this on a walk um, yesterday with my family. And it reminded me of a maraca like a baby maraca, I forgot what they're called, but the, the thing that babies use for their development for sound and play, I thought it was really fun and I was kind of just walking around like going like this <laughs> on our walk, which was fun <laughs> for me, <laughs> maybe not for everybody else. Um, and I know that this looks and feels like a weapon, but I really find that if you gave this to a baby, they would try to put it in their mouth and they'd find a lot of joy. And I kind of think of like finding joy in play with objects of utility. Obviously this is for a tree for it to transfer seeds. Um, and it's not, no one would think of it as a toy at first. And I think it was pretty interesting that the first thing I thought was, this is a toy. <laughs> Um, this is nature's toy for me. I'm going to put on some music. I'm going to explore a little bit this idea of playing, um, and finding play with the unexpected, I guess. Um, so you can please work on your emotional connection to your object or join me in movement with mine. I'm going to put some music on once again. And um, I'm gonna try to put a little bit more time, but I also wanna give us time 
to unwrap and look at um, the pools of information that we've created together and hopefully put them together. <laughs> So I hope you had a little bit of fun with that. I know I did at some point. I was just moving without my arms and my legs and I <laughs> thought that was a lot of fun. I wish I could like run around and spin and do a lot more with that. But we work with what we have, right? So I think for my emotional connection, I'm gonna think of this not having my arms and this Facing these circles. Which to me kind of reminded me of like that like hazardous bulb. And I know you can't really see my feet. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Maybe that shows a little bit more, but I'm just Moving my legs and moving my feet. Um, yeah, I just, that's what clicked for me for joy and fun and all that stuff. So now for our last object, we have the architecture. We have the physical attributes right, these, the spines and the, um, oh, and the rigidity. And then we also have our last attribute of these legs of finding this joy in our movement. And I think that makes a lot of sense. This is a very leggy um, object, I guess. <laughs> so, to recap, we have our architecture, we have our thorns for our physical, we also have our rigidity or the stability, and then we have our little leg circles playing with our legs for our um, emotional connection with play. So let's try 
if we can, to connect that to our first phrase um, and our first set of movements, which were where we had our object one and our object two. So our object one was this turn and then coming down, creating our pottery, pink pottery piece, right? And then we had our emotional connection to our pillow that I had that's here. <laughs> and that was with care. And that was just bringing our arm, tiny body roll into care. And then we go straight up and over into our stick and we go out into our little mantis <laughs> is what I'm gonna call it and our stability and then our legs right those are the core movements um, I'm gonna turn up the music so I can hear it a little better and we're just going to run through it really quickly if that's okay with you um, and we will go through these movements together. So, starting with object one. And that is our movement. You also, I hope, would have your own movement that you've created as well. And you can dance along with me. I'm gonna go through the movement I created with you one more time. Um, and you can also follow along with your own movement. That song was really slow, unfortunately. But thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I know that I kind of ran through a lot of this information um, and that's just due to time constraints. Um, and it's really, it really is a lot to go through in just one hour with all of you. Um, so please contact me, reach out to me on social media should be linked with All House Dance Collective. And um, let's just come together as we end and have a little bit of a mindfulness closure as we enter our next session, as we go throughout our day. And I really hope you enjoy the rest of Soul Fest. So let's come together and we'll take a couple deep breaths for your hands wherever you need them to be and breathe in <sighs> and out and in <sighs> out and out <sighs> okay Perfect, thank you so much for joining me today during this workshop. It was a pleasure of mine to be here with you today and to be part of this festival. 
I really hope you enjoy and I hope that maybe you took something away today that you will incorporate in the future in your dance making journey. Thank you so much everybody. <laughs> Bye.